guys and welcome back to the channel. Now today I've got the LS7 Plus from Nan Robots and I am pretty happy about this scooter, pretty excited. This is the first scooter I reviewed from Nan Robots and I've heard a lot of good things from this company from other uh, YouTubers that uh, do what I do. And so I was pretty stoked when they reached out about a month ago and they sent me this. This is like as gnarly as it gets with these guys. They have a bunch of uh, models, anything from $700 up to $3,400. The LS7 Plus comes in about $3,400 or just underneath that price. And so it's not cheap, but uh, it is, it has been performing pretty well so far. Now, this is the only scooter I reviewed in this price range. I think the next expensive scooter is like $2,500. So this is about a thousand bucks more than the, the, the next one in line. I don't have anything to compare this to, but I'm gonna still show you what it can do starting off with the speed test. The LS7 Plus has two 2400 watt motors, one in each wheel for a combined total watts of 4800, which is just insane. And to give you some perspective, the Segway Max, just a single motor kick scooter that is very popular, has a 350 watt motor. So this thing is just jam packed with a ton of power. Uh, now that is powered by a 60 volt, 40 amp hour lithium battery. There are two charging ports, and if you have two chargers, it takes you five hours. They only give you one charger, which takes 10 to 12 hours to charge up with that, just that single charger. Now it's time to see how that power translates to speed. This does have a rating up to 55 miles per hour, which is the highest rating out of any scooter I reviewed. Now in the settings, you can actually limit the power output from 1% to 100%. I do have it set to 100% for this test, and I'm gonna show you a few different speeds because we got single motor, dual motor, turbo, eco, all that fun stuff. So let me show you how fast it can go first on all three of the speed modes. I have turbo selected, dual motors. I've got a full battery, my speed app open, and uh, I'm gonna show you how fast it can go on all three of the uh, speed modes, starting off with number one. So one is 22, 21, 22. That's pretty fast speed for speed mode one. Here's two. That looks like 32, 33 for speed mode two. And then here's the big one, speed mode three. Woo -wee. Well, I ran out of road, so I'm gonna head back the other way and see if I can get a little bit faster. <laughs> this is quite terrifying. Yeah, I'm good with uh, 44 miles an hour. <laughs> that is pretty intense. Oh man, it still had some power to give, actually a lot of power. I was still accelerating when I hit the brake. I'm like shaking. <laughs> and I do have that steering uh, dampener uh, turned up all the way. But uh, it definitely, you know, it's not shaking. I didn't get any speed wobble. I'm just nervous going that fast. I'm kind of a, a baby when it comes to speed, but Woo, you want power, <laughs> you've got it here. On speed mode three, uh, if I hit the eco button on there, the acceleration power is the same as on turbo, but it does top out and I'll show you how fast that goes. Yeah, so eco tops out about 32 miles an hour. And then if I stay on speed mode three and do single motor, I'll show you how fast that goes. And I do have turbo turned on here. Okay. So that's gonna top out at 32 miles an hour, single motor with turbo on, which is the same speed with dual motors and eco. And next up is the acceleration test. Gonna see how, uh, how quick it is to haul this 95 pound scooter, which is actually, it ties for the heaviest scooter in this price range. The other one is the Outstar Max that I reviewed uh, about a year ago, but it can hold up to 330 pounds, so it does have a pretty high carrying capacity. And I'm gonna show you different accelerations as well. In the settings, you can change from a fast to a slow acceleration, so I'm gonna show you different accelerations on single motor, dual motor, all that fun stuff. This is the acceleration test, speed mode three, dual motors, turbo turned on, and in the settings, you can either switch it to a slow or a fast start. I do have it set for the fast start for this first test. Here we go. <laughs> that was uh, spinning about 15, 20 feet, already up to 32 miles an hour. And that is good. Uh, 
There's just an the intersection right there, so I'm gonna pause that test. Man, so I mean that's a uh, that's less than oh my, about a block, and I hit 37 miles per hour. That is insane acceleration. Jeez, woo, and that is quite fun too. Man, you can hear that tire spinning. That's pretty loud and ferocious. <laughs> And now I'm going to switch in the settings and it's a uh, P7. So we got a slow start now and still on turbo, dual motors, speed mode three. Here we go. Wow, that is, that is definitely a slow start. The tires didn't even spin, but I'm already uh, 34. Woo! <laughs> That's still crazy fast. The only difference between uh, that other test was just the, the, the first 10, 15 feet. Uh, that's actually very gentle. Um, as soon as I hit the throttle, it, you know, it, I could feel the power coming on, but it wasn't so much where the tires were spinning. It is, it's definitely a slower start, but after about 15 feet, Woo, that power turns on and again, I hit 37 miles an hour uh, in about a block. And then for this last acceleration test, I'm gonna just do single motor, turbo still on and on speed mode three. And I do have it set to a fast start in the settings. Let's see if this is gonna spin any tires here. Here we go. No, no tire spin. And that's more like a single motor what you would expect for a single motor start. But it's already up to 26 miles an hour, 27, 28. So even with that single motor, I still hit 30 miles per hour in about a block. So bottom line, this has just got a ton of power. Two 2,400 watt motors. Uh, that's just, that's insane. That's the most power I've seen in any scooter. So if you're uh, a power junkie, you like to shred the tires, leave some marks on the road, this, this will be your best friend. It's time to show you how long this thing can go. Uh, this is the start of the range test. I've got a full charge on the scooter and I'm uh, gonna keep it on probably speed mode one with a soft acceleration. I was out here yesterday all day. I did like three, four hours out here. I'm actually kind of tired from that, from that ride yesterday. But during that time, I kind of figured out the sweet spots. Uh, I, I realized that I didn't want a lot of like quick acceleration. I kind of prefer the, the slow start for off-road. So anyway, I'm gonna start the tracking app and uh, see how long this can go. The LS7 has a range rating up to 45 miles. While I'm on this range test, I got my microphone plugged in. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the scooter. Starting off with the design, which is just the coolest looking scooter I have ever seen. As most of you guys know, I do like the swing arm look. And every scooter that has had that design has only had it on one side. Well, this one has the dual swing arm design and it just gives the scooter a gnarly look and makes it stand out from the crowd. I really like the design of this. And everything's really clean and tidy. The wires in the front, uh, in front of the handlebars are all wrapped and tied together. They've got lights on this everywhere. I'll talk more about that later, show you what it looks like when it's dark. The thing that really stood out the most when I took it out of the box was how high this is off the ground. Standing on the deck, I've gotta be off the ground about a foot, if not more. It has the most clearance I've ever seen on any scooter. I am off the ground higher than any other scooter, the stability doesn't feel any different. I don't feel top heavy. With the two motors and the battery placed, you know, in the deck, and with that deck being so huge and wide, there's just some good weight distribution. It makes it easy and fun to ride, especially, you know, on the paved trails where I can easily take my hand off and <laughs> have no problem scratching my face as I'm going 20, 25 miles an hour. Not a lot of scooters can do that. And then as far as handling, they do have a, a steering dampener that you do have to attach, which is very easy to do so. There's just two screws that you have to add. And then there's a dial to uh, choose how much dampening you want. I've got the dial turned all the way to the, the, I guess the most dampening. Give you a view here if I can. And that is actually very 
hard to turn. <laughs> I gotta use a lot of force. So if you wanna go fast and you got it straight away, you know, that actually really is gonna hold that front wheel in place nicely. And then let me turn this all the way the other way. Man, that's really, goes around about three times. And, oh, that's much, much easier. So that's kind of cool. I actually like that. Out here on this off-road trail, I actually have about halfway. I don't like to have too loose of steering because, you know, if I hit a rock or a pothole and if I'm not holding onto the handlebars as tight as I like, then that can kind of throw me. So I really like that feature to help with rougher trails. This is a wild horse, a wild stallion. The dampener is that uh, saddle <laughs> that helps you stay on the horse. Let me dive into the cockpit, starting off with the handlebars. I always like to talk about the spread of the handlebars, and with this scooter, it is huge, which fits the frame and the power the scooter puts out quite nicely. If you have a powerful machine, you gotta have a nice wide stance, and they nailed that. There's only a couple things I don't like about the scooter, and the first one are the grips. They don't feel nice, they're loose, they turn, and I think that they're too big. My hands are actually getting some fatigue because it takes so much power to grip them. So I'm definitely gonna switch those out to some smaller and nicer filling grips and glue those suckers on so they don't spin. The 7 Plus has a finger throttle and the throttle is very reactive. It takes about probably a quarter to a half an inch before the power engages. And if you're trying to go at a slower speed, <laughs> it can do it, but it wants to go faster. It's kind of hard to hold the throttle to you know, go like six or seven miles per hour like I am right now. And then on speed mode one, going uh, 12, 13 miles an hour, if I release it, it, cuts the power off immediately. And then when I'm going 15, 16 miles an hour, if I punch it on speed mode one, it's, it is instantaneous. Man, I really like how sensitive and prompt that throttle is. Moving on is the stem and the stem height. I'm 5'11 and it is perfect for my height. One of the biggest things I complain about with these off-road scooters is too short of a stem and if it's uh, angled back towards the back end of the deck. And this one's not, this is, I mean, this is almost straight up and down. I've got plenty of room between the handlebars and my waist to crouch down when I need to. And you gotta have that for something this powerful. And that stem is just beefy too. It's one of the thicker stems I've seen on a scooter. And it has that uh, dial collapsing mechanism, which holds stems the tightest in my experience. I really like that connection. If I were to build a scooter, that's the, that's the type of collapsing assembly that I would have. And then once collapsed, you turn the dial all the way in. It actually holds the stem in place and then you can use it to lift it up. I'm not gonna show you my face doing that because it's just too dang heavy, <laughs> but it can be done. Well, next is the deck and it is by far the largest deck I've ever seen on a scooter. I've got a 10 and a half size shoe and putting them one in front of the other, they fit on the deck. I don't touch either the front or the back ends. And then I also still have that uh, tail fin when I need. So I've got just tons of room front to back and then side to side, <laughs> I've got like two inches on each side. So I mean, you got enough room on this deck to have a dance party or something. It's just monstrous. The three things that I look for as far as comfort is a straight up and down stem, a tall enough stem, and a large deck, a, large, a lot of standing room. And this has got all three of those. Below the deck is a dual hydraulic spring suspension. So it is a full suspension scooter as you would expect for something in this price range. It's actually not the best suspension that I felt for an off-road scooter. Now that being said, I have hit some pretty rough and rocky sections and it's done, it's done okay, but I have noticed my eyeballs vibrating more than I like. I'm still waiting for a company to put some air suspension on a scooter. That's, that would be amazing. And last but not least, you have 12 by four inch air filled, super gnarly all-terrain tires. These things are beast. When I'm going fast and hitting some sections of the trail that are kind of windy, I can hear those tires just tearing up and eating the trail alive. I've actually taken this on some sands the other day 
and uh, I was slipping and sliding a little bit, but it did so much better than I thought it was going to. I made it back from the race test and I am quite tired taking a good old sit on the scooter. It's big enough for me to do that. <laughs> but uh, my app recorded over 18 miles with 1600 feet of elevation gain, which is awesome. That's a fantastic uh, elevation and range. I'm very happy with that. And I rode this scooter hard through some, I mean, through some, some soft sand, some powdery dirts up a lot of hills, down a lot of hills. It was just a lot of hard riding. I kept it on speed mode one and uh, with that soft acceleration, uh, there were a couple times I've sw I switched it over to speed two. Oh, and I really enjoy that dampening, steering dampener. That probably saved my butt six or seven times from crashing. So uh, I would definitely recommend putting that on uh, if you do pick this up. There's no hill or torque rating for the scooter. I'm kind of curious to find out what the torque rating of this thing is, but uh, I couldn't find that information online. But I did find a hill that I've never been able to take any vehicle up, so I figured that was a, a good starting point to see what this can do. Okay guys, I'm back to mega, ultra, humongous, steep, craziness hill. <laughs> How do you like that name? This is uh, pretty close to the top. What do we got here? This is 25%. And as you can see, it's a uh, pretty loose stuff. Gravel, a lot of sand. Uh, let's measure it here in the uh, middle section. And that is 31.5%. Looks like it's the steepest near the bottom. And that is 37%, 37.4. Oh man, it's probably gonna be a good 300 feet. It's a good size hill. You can hear my breath. I'm, I'm uh, hopping and puffing, walking up and down this thing. So I'll hop on the scooter and show you what it can do. Okay, around this corner is where it starts to climb. I'm just gonna try to hang on for dear life, trying to stay on the scooter as it goes up this thing. Here we go. I'm on speed mode one. I got turbo and uh, a hard fast start selected as well. It starts to climb here. off just to for balance not to give it any help and, oh, there we go oh, that is loud ferocious and insane oh, yeah. <laughs> Woo. oh that is the first time I made it up that hill man yeah the, the biggest challenge is just staying on it it's got the power it has the grip uh, the traction but uh, you hit these bumps with, that wheel, with those wheels spinning so fast and it kind of throws you from side to side. That is most impressive. And of course, now it's a brake test. The scooter does come with dual hydraulic nut brakes and I'm gonna show you how well they work going down the same hill or actually a hill steeper than I came up for the hill test. To the left is where I came up on the hill test. To the right is even a steeper and more powdery hill that I'm gonna go down for the brake test. So here we go. And it's starting to get steep right off the bat. We got some just powder right here. You got these hydraulic brakes and so they're just, as you would expect, super smooth. And no squeaking or grinding or anything. Whew. Oh, <laughs> little pothole there <laughs> that I dug in. <laughs> Man, they got great stopping power. It's kind of hard to see how steep this thing is, but it is steep. <laughs> That's gotta be 45, 50% there. Then kind of get some speed, gradually pressing them down. Yeah, that's got terrific stopping power. You don't have to put a lot of pressure on the levers either to really engage the brakes. So that is just top notch, high end brakes there. Let me give you a rundown of the LCD screen control pad. First, the screen. Uh, this is something, uh, one, or one of the things I don't like about the scooter. It's just very hard to see the screen, very dim. As you can see, it is a clear sunny day and I've got to, you know, cup the, or shade the screen so I can actually read the battery life uh, or level on it. 
Um, but it is quite big though. I mean, that's gotta be four or five inches from corner to corner. There is a key with it as well. Actually, they give you two keys and then it displays the volts up here, which is also kind of hard to see in the sunlight. On the left are the lights and I actually have a light segment. So I'll show you the lights uh, when it gets dark, I'll go through all of that. There's actually a remote that comes with it too. Down here is the horn and pretty uh, weak horn <laughs> for something this big and monstrous. I'd like a big old gnarly, tough uh, sounding horn. And then on the right side is the finger throttle. And as you can see, there's no display screen on this, just the uh, three buttons, power plus and minus for your uh, speed modes. Down below is the Eco Turbo Single Dual. And then on the left here, this is also part of the lights and then uh, the left and right blinkers here. And that's pretty much it. Pretty easy to navigate uh, screen and control pad. Well, it's uh, mostly dark out here. Let me show you the lights. So here's the light switch. Put them on and woo, that is very bright. Those are cool wraparound tail lights and headlights on the deck. And then you got this cool looking blue rimmed light in the front. <laughs> that is very nice looking. And then on the left, there's the left and right blinkers. There's the left one. You can see that is flashing. And there's actually a indicator light up here on the screen, which is kind of cool. And then if I hit this one, this turns on the stem lights. Nice. And robot, that is pretty cool. Walk around here for a second, back it up to get the full effect. Wow, that is a sweet looking scooter. That's the kind of thing that motivates you to go ride in the night. Oh, so it's on the stem and it's also here as well. Oh, and <laughs> now they, uh, they love to illuminate their, uh, their company, their company name. So anyway, there's a look at the scooter at night. Well, as far as accessories for after sale stuff, if you do pick one of these up, uh, they have more accessories, more replacement parts than any bike or scooter company I've seen yet. So you got some confidence if you do pick one of these up that you'll be able to fix the thing that broke. The LS Plus 7 has an IP53 waterproof rating, which means that it can withstand low pressure water jets from any angle. It also has a six month warranty and free shipping in the lower 48. If you wanna pick it up, I've got the link in the description. Also be sure to check out my website, electricrevolutionreviews.com. There you can find all my reviews sorted by price and capability. Hit that like button before you go and please subscribe for the latest in electric bike, board and scooter reviews. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.